Hey, everybody. How are we doing? Good. Good. Thanks. Thanks. Um, Halloween's Wednesday. Who loves Halloween? Love Halloween. I know that's sacrilegious in a church, but <laughs> we'll be fine. I saw a post last year. It was like this pastor outside giving candy. He's like, met 200 neighbors, gave out 1,000 pieces of candy, didn't even worship Satan. What the heck? <laughs> How did that happen? Didn't even worship Satan. It was close, though. It's right on the verge. Um, <laughs> we're really glad you're here. Uh, we've been talking about gifts, and uh, over the month, I hope it's been encouraging for you and identifying of maybe what the what are the gifts that God's given you um, from from the time you were before you were born, and how, what has He instilled in you. And now it's time for us to kind of wrap this up and and get into. Um, uh, this last week, and then next week, we, we're going to start talking about God's promises for us. What are God's promises that he's given us? And we're going to go through the book of Nehemiah. So if you want to start reading, read the book of Nehemiah. It's a really cool uh, book, and um, you can learn a lot about it. And then we'll talk about it next week. Does that sound pretty good? It does, doesn't it? Okay. I'm going to pray. Lord, thank you for being here. Thank you that your spirit dwells within us and among us. God, thank you that you, we don't have to ask you to come. Lord, you are just, you're here. So we ask just for uh, your words to be spoken and, and your spirit to move in a mighty way. We love you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So today we're going to talk about something that's a little bit on the edge of people getting nervous. It's called, we're going to talk about the gifts of the spirit. Okay? Whew. Okay, take deep breaths. It's going to be okay. So um, I think, uh, so we've talked about the gifts from the Father or creation gifts, right? Those are like the, the, the administration and leadership and serving and giving and exhortation and hospitality. These gifts that are instilled in you and they're how you show God's love in a powerful way. Okay? Then last week we talked about uh, the gifts of Christ or the fivefold ministry, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, and the pastor. Yeah, that sounds right. And uh, those are the ministry of Christ, right? So that's how we minister to the world. The ministry of the world is just to serve the world. And then today we're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit. These are the gifts given us by the Holy Spirit to be able to be the life and love of Christ to everyone around us. So it's kind of a building uh, set of gifts that we're talking about today. We're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. So yesterday I, I, you know, I got a bike. My wife bought me a bike. She wins the world. And so I got all the gear. I'm like, I got gloves. I got like a cool neck thing, and I was like, Shh, I'm a biker, right? So then we go out to Soapstone, and it is like blowing 50 or 60 miles an hour, like literally falling over. And when you were going downhill, um, you're like slowing down. When you're going downhill, it was so windy, and I was like, I'm not a biker. I can't do this. This is terrible. I am, I got the look, right? I can even say all the things, but I'm not a biker yet, right? And after eight miles and nearly dying, we made it back. But when we're out there and we're standing in the prairie, and it's almost Wyoming, you know how Wyoming blows? Like the wind blows? <laughs> the wind. The wind. Specifically the wind. And, uh, and the wind is just blowing me like crazy. And I remember thinking, uh, when the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, he came in like a mighty rushing wind. And when the Spirit comes and in, in, in dwells in, inside of us, it, it, was, it was always pictured as a wind. The, the word is pneuma, the breath of God or the wind of God. And I remember being like, whoa, there's a lot of pneuma out here today. Okay, so we were talking about the Spirit, how the Spirit moves and works inside of us and, and what, is, what the gifts of the Spirit are. So if you've taken the, the gift test assessment thingy, then you'll see a mix of probably... Uh, creation gifts, a mix of ministry gifts, and then you'll probably have some Holy Spirit gifts that are like, what are these things? And so we'll, we're going to clarify that. So let's read it in 1 Corinthians 12. If you have a version app, it's on there. Also, it'll be on the screen. If you have a Bible that's made of paper, I mean, good luck. Okay. <laughs> so there are, different times, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. So key thing about the Spirit uh, when I grew up, I grew up and we used to say Holy Ghost. Anyone ever say Holy Ghost? Right? And I was like, is the Holy Ghost scary? You know, is it scary? What it? And I think, I, I remember I had this friend one time was like, I get Jesus, I get God, but the, he, she called it spooky. <laughs> the spooky thing. I'm like, no, it's not spooky. Sadly, I think we have like kind of mysticized and spookified, that's not a word, the spirit into being this thing that's like, oh, it's mysterious. This Holy Spirit is just the person of Jesus that gets to live and be with, with us forever. You know when we're little kids and we say, I just asked Jesus into my heart. You know, I asked Jesus into my heart. Where does he live? Ella always says, my heart beep. 
which is the cutest thing ever. And that will usher in the second coming. Um, but no, the, the Spirit comes and dwells inside of us. When we get saved, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside of us. So if you've asked Christ as Savior, as Lord, if you believe, if you've taken that step to accept, however you want to define that, the Holy Spirit comes and is deposited into you as the guarantee of salvation, right? So the Spirit has, has come to us to give us gifts, to give us the ministry of Christ. So when we read these gifts, you're gonna, if you, and if you know the works of Christ, you're going to hear in these, in these gifts the ministry of Jesus. This is what Jesus did. Right? That's why when Jesus was going to die, he's like, guys, it is better that I go. And we're like, nope. He's like, it is better that I go so that the Holy Spirit can come. He can lead you to all truth. He can help you to understand what's right and what's wrong. And he can help portray my love to all people everywhere. So that's where the Holy Spirit comes. So the Holy Spirit came and he said, and he gave different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. So the Spirit distributes gifts to us. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same work of God. Okay, so there's some belief here when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit that they're kind of only for a couple people, right? Or they're for this expression that's supposed to kind of be a hoopla and a crazy wild thing that, exp that you experience. But the text is saying that the Spirit is going to give these gifts to each one of us as it's needed, right? Each person who has the Spirit in them has access to all these gifts, so now it says, now to each one is a manifestation of the Spirit. So that's a big word, okay? The manifestation of the Spirit is just the, seeing the ministry of Christ come about, right? It's like, it's like we believe that God is everywhere, but we want to experience him. We want a manifestation of who he is and what he does, his love, his peace, his grace. You know, we cry, oh my gosh, he's here, you know, that type of thing. We want to feel and experience him. Same thing with this. Now there's a manifestation of the Spirit. So when, when these gifts are active in your life, which many of the times they are, and you might not even be able to be like, oh, I'm functioning in the spirit right now, right? If you say that, you're weird, don't say it, okay? <laughs> now, to each one, there's a manifestation of spirit. It is given for the common good. Man, words are really important. Did you know that? Words are really important. Given for the common good. To one, so there's a list now. So he's telling you this is the point. The spirit is going to give you and I gifts as we need them in our lives, and, and no, one gets, no one gets to be like, I'm all these things at all times. The Spirit gives them. And it's given for the common good. To one there is given the Spirit, which is the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, miraculous powers like Spider-Man, right? By the same Spirit. And to another prophecy, we've talked about prophecy, and to an, another the distinguishing between spirits, or right and wrong, evil and good, and to another the speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of those tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he dis distributes them to each one as he determines. Okay, this is really important. Okay, the last sentence is the key to everything. As he determines. Okay, what I've experienced in my life in the gifts of the Spirit is the gifts of the Spirit were something that you experience in a service, right? And the more loud and the more wild and the more weird, honestly, it was, the more Spirit it was. Anyone ever experienced that? Like, the louder and the wilder, oh, look at the Spirit. Like, Spirit seems out of control. This is weird. I don't know what's going on, right? Nothing, in no way is this meant to be these gifts meant to be done just in a service. These are the, the gifts that are meant to be portrayed out in the world to show people who the love of Christ is, right? These are the empowerment gifts. They're the things that are like, I don't know much about the Bible. I don't know how to tell people about Jesus. But these are the, this is the power of God for the people you come into contact with. And people have distorted these gifts. They've mistreated them. They've made them a spectacle. And sometimes I've, I've heard people say things that are like, man, I'd rather have people be in the spirit than be saved. And I'm like, you don't understand the gospel. The goal of these gifts, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecies, discernment, tongues and interpretation are so that we can show people who Christ really is because this is the way Christ acted. This is what Christ experienced. I call these, in some ways, the situational gifts, right? It's that, have you ever been in a situation, you're talking to someone, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to say right now. I don't know what to do. And all of a sudden, you get this like, little 
bing, of wisdom. It's the Spirit. It's a word of wisdom. It's extra wisdom than you didn't have that God has given to you. You ever have in a situation, you're like, oh, this is really bad, but all of a sudden you're like, I have faith. It's going to be okay. God is with me. It's gonna, we're going we're gonna to get through this. It's going to be awesome. Where did that come from? That's not me. It's a gift of the Spirit. Do you ever know like, what to say to someone at the right time to know what they're going through? Do you ever see someone and see, man, this person is struggling. We gotta, I got to pray. I got to talk to him. I got to pray for him. Do you ever see those things? These are, these are the gifts of the Spirit. It's a revelation of God's heart for the people around you, and it's given to you as a gift. And he's going to give it to you when you need it as he determines, right? So if someone needs encouragement, he's probably not going to make you, you know, I don't know, have tons of faith for them. He's going to want you to encourage them. Right? He gives you these gifts to help you love and serve and care for others better. I call them the situational gifts. Right? If you're in a situation, you have no idea what to say or do, I, I pray, Lord, do it. Right? It doesn't mean that I like, shut my brain off and I'm over, but the partnership kicks in. And all of a sudden, I have wisdom. I know exactly what's going on in someone's life. I'm able to see, like the gift of prophecy is just to see, right? I'm able to have faith when someone doesn't. I'm able to see, is this good or evil working here, or is this just whatever? I have discernment. These are gifts of the Spirit that are given to every single one of us as we need them. I think some people tend to function in a certain way. Like some people have the gift of faith, and they just are like, I have the faith all the time. It's just like you just have kind of drawn to that gift. But every single one of us have access to every single one of these gifts. And the Spirit will give them to you as you need them to minister to other people, to edify each other, to encourage each other, or to encourage the whole body. And their purpose is not for it to be a spectacle or a show, but to point to Jesus. To point people to Jesus. How's that sound? Thanks. So let's talk about these a little bit. Are we doing okay? Okay, okay, cool, okay, cool. Don't worry, at the end, I'm not going to be like, let's stand up and flop. <laughs> I was going to show this video of, like, Pentecostal services with Street Fighter 2 graphics, which was awesome. But I felt like that would not be appropriate. So I'll post it on the Facebook, you can watch it later. <laughs> so let's talk about these for a second. So faith, I'm going to go over through them real quick. So the gift of faith is this ability to see and to believe what you can't always see to have faith that this is going to be okay. And you might have like the worst thing happen in your life, but all of a sudden you just oh, have faith. It's a gift that God's given you. It's, it's, you might have faith for other people though, when they don't have it. Words of wisdom. When you sit with someone, you're in a situation, you might just have like the most wise, profound thing. People have said that to me like, wow, how'd you know that you're so wise? I'm like, totally not me. Right? I mean partnership, but yeah, that one was from the Lord, straight up. That was pretty good. Right? You might have the, you ever have the right thing to say to someone, perfect thing. The right thing that just encourages them, that gives them direction, helps them just be spurred on towards what's good. It's a word of wisdom. Sometimes it can be very formal, like I feel like God's saying this for you. A lot of times I think the spirit, this, this gift just functions through our talking to each other and conversations. And actually, the less spiritualized these are, sometimes the better. Thus saith the Lord. Word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is more, is more specific, I think. I think it's more like, hey, I really feel like you're going through this thing, and God wants to say this thing for you. It's a little scarier, right? You, 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 or you can see somebody, like, feel like they're discouraged, or feel like they, they have been struggling with this thing, and you're able to speak into that and have a word of knowledge, something that you shouldn't know, but you do know, right? Not to exploit them or to embarrass them, but to understand and love and serve them. Words of knowledge. Then there's prophecy. Prophecy, like we talked last week, is, is the being able to see. Like I, I don't know what's going on, but God has given you the gift to see, to know this is what his plan is, this is where he's going, this is what he wants you to be, and who he, what he wants you to do. Then there, and, and these can all be kind of weird. There's many times in your life, do you have times in your life when you're in and you see a person, you're like, oh, I really feel like I should tell this person this thing. You ever feel that? It's the spirit knocking on that old heart of yours. Knocking on the heart, encouraging you. Next would be gifts like miracles. These are un... You can't explain them, right? These are things you like, you know, like I remember there's been miracles in our lives with our finances, like, hey, we don't have any money. And then all of a sudden a check comes in the mail, like, where did this come from? I don't know. Exactly what we needed, right? Miracles aren't always finding the front parking spot, you know? 
but they, they're things that you can't explain. Like, and, and, you, and people always do it. Like, oh, but that could have been just this, that, and the other thing. It's like, no, 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 no. God still works miracles. Then there's gifts of healing. You're praying for someone, and they're healed, either spiritually or mentally or physically. One time I was struggling. I played, had this job where I typed all day and listened to music, and it was awesome because no one talked to me. It was, it was awesome for like six months, and I was like, I'm going crazy. You know? And my wrists were really hurting me, and I was a guitar player. And, this, and I was like, man, my wrists been bugging me. I like, couldn't move my wrists very well. And this friend, she's like, hey, I'll pray for you. She came and prayed for me. I felt like literally almost like a click in my wrist, and I've never had pain since. Right? Never since, ever. I was like, and it was not very spiritual. It wasn't like, come up in the front and let's tell us, brother, what is your just, you know. <laughs> it was just like, we are normal people who love Jesus. And in a moment where I was suffering, she stopped and prayed for me. And that acti- activated the gift of the Spirit. And I was healed, my wrist. We had a friend when we prayed for 72 hours of prayer, one of Lynette's friends who she was diagnosed with cancer, and we had all campuses praying, and then they went and tested her afterwards, and she had no cancer. Well, that could just be. The doctors, they miss something. I know some doctors, they're really smart. <laughs> Gifts of healing. You can't, you can't even, and sometimes God uses doctors to heal too, right? Amen? There we go. Next would be discernment. This is the ability to read someone, read a situation. Is this good? Is this evil? Is this bad? Is this good? Right? Uh, if you have someone with this gift, or if you function in this gift more naturally, or if you ask for this gift, uh, listen to these people. You know, I've had people be like, hey, you keep an eye out for that guy. And I'm like, you're just being a jerk. Right? And then like three months later, it's like, oh yeah, that was really good. Thanks. You know? If you have, if you have discernment, you're going to feel like you're being judgmental. But in so many ways, you're just seeing what you need to see. Next one, and this is the scariest one, is tongues. Oh my gosh, now it's getting tense in here. Tongues, all tongues is, is a different language that you get, that you, that you have. I had a friend, and she got saved, she got filled with the Spirit, and the Lord gave her the English language. She was Ukrainian, and God just like, in like, just boom, had the English, she knew English. Right, and then throughout the next since 1997, she's been like traveling all over the Ukraine and Eastern Europe, just sharing the love of Jesus with people that come from America and her, and it's this incredible thing, okay? Also, the gift of tongues is, can be a spiritual language, a spiritual prayer language that people can use to pray. It's not sp- supposed to be this kind of like spectacle of experience. It's supposed to be a personal thing that I use to edify me. It's bypassing my brain and all the mess that I have bring to the table, and it's just my spirit and God's spirit working together. It's a pretty cool thing. We'll talk about that in detail another time. And then interpretation of that tongue. If it, there is a public expression of that, it should be interpreted like a prophecy, right? Or like a word of knowledge or something that, that makes sense. It's like someone, I've had people stand up and speak in a different language, and I said, that's weird. And then another person came up and said, hey, this is what I feel like it says it's supposed to be, and then it was like really cool. I'm like, all right, that's cool. I'm into that, right? Order, it's supposed to be always edifying, encouraging, lifting up. None of these gifts are ever meant to bring someone down. None of these gifts are ever meant to point someone out. Not, none of these gifts are ever meant to be like, you come up, let's talk about how sinful you are, <laughs> right? And sadly, in American Pentecostalism, these gifts have been twisted and distorted, and we've judged the move of God based on the amount of gifts that are expressed. Right? And the move of God is not found in the gifts, it's found in the fruit of the Spirit. Right? It's found in love. Is there more love today? Yeah. Is there more joy? Is there more peace? Is there more patience? That's the move of God, right? The fruit of the Spirit is the move of God, and that's how we judge it. The gifts are given us so that we can help produce the move of God in our lives, and the people around us. The goal of these gifts is to glorify God, to reach those who are lost, and to encourage each other. Their empowerment, they're the empowerment for us to connect this community in Christ. Do you ever wonder why we don't see these things very much anymore in America? Do you ever think about that? You read the Bible, and they're like, this person was healed. You know, the woman just touches, uh, touches Jesus's, uh Robe. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> Robe. And she's healed after 12 years of no one being able to do anything. 
You know, you ever wonder about that? Or, or this is the craziest one. It's Peter. Someone just goes into Peter's shadow and gets healed. I'm like, dang. <laughs> Do you ever wonder that? Or like, or the woman that, that was at the well, and she's obviously had a hard, hard life and has been through hell. And Jesus says in, uh, that he loves her, and he gives her living water, and he honors her. His words of knowledge for her. Do you ever wonder why that doesn't happen anymore? If you go to other places of the, country, of the world, we're going to Myanmar at the end of um, November, and uh, it is like Acts 2 going on. People without any biblical knowledge, without any type of like doctrinal or theological background, and they're just moving in the life and love of Jesus, and they're seeing people healed and set free and restored, and these like 18-year-old kids are like starting churches, and it's crazy. And they ask like chumps like us to come and help teach them. And I'm like, can they come and teach us? Can they come and show us how to flow in the power and authority of Christ through his spirit? The thing that we will not be able to do in this world to reach people for Christ is to out-entertain them. We will never be able to out-entertain anything else. Have you been to the mountains? Way nice. Have you been to a movie? Oh my gosh, look at the CGI. Right? <laughs> You've been downtown, I've been to a concert, the production, I mean, we'll never be able to out um, entertain or out um, whatever. But we will be able to show people the love and power of Christ through the gifts of the Spirit. That is the missing part, I think, in what God wants to do in our church, in a not strange way. Right? Because I think people have gotten that, but then they've gotten so caught up in the gifts that they're like, oh my gosh, how's church? Oh, Oh, I was on the floor for 20 minutes. Good. What are you doing outside of the building? How is the Spirit of God moving and working your life in the people you work with, in your family? How are you getting words of knowledge and prophecy and praying for healing out there where Jesus commissioned us to go? As you are going, go and make disciples. And we're made disciples through his love and through his power. So we can have a good old time. But if it's not happening out there, it's not the spirit. That's not going to preach very well. So let's read this message. Oh, gosh, we got to hurry. Okay. Luke 10. This is a cool story. So Jesus has this, the, these followers. There are a, lot, a lot of them are kids. A lot of them don't know anything. You know, they're, they're, they're Jews, so they understand the, the Jewish law, and they're experiencing this new thing, right? And so Jesus goes, and he says, all right, I'm sending you out. 72 of you. Go get them. All right? And he gives this instruction. Go show my love. Go, you know, cast out demons. Go heal the sick. Raise it. All these things, right? Everything you've seen me do, go do it, right? And it's this kind of, and we have to understand these are not Bible students, Bible school students. These are just like people that have been hanging out. It's probably the first year and a half of Jesus' ministry, okay? And so when the 72 returned with joy, they said, Lord, even the demons, demons submitted to us in your name. So they go out and it all happens. It all works, right? Like they, everything, like they're healing people. They're praying for people. God's doing them work. They're encouraging. They're giving words of wisdom. They're doing this great thing. They're like, oh, it worked, Right? First couple times I've ever like taken a step of faith to like pray for someone. Like I felt like this is for them. Oh my gosh, was this scary? It was like sweatzilla. And I was like, whoo! You know? And then I prayed and the, like then they they like, oh my gosh, that's for me. They're crying. I'm crying. Oh, you know, and I'm like, it worked. God is true. His words are true. He answered my prayers. He said, they say, Lord, in your name, all this stuff happened. Holy cow. And then Jesus says this, and this is amazing. And Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I saw, I, when you guys were out there, I saw evil being kicked in the butt. I saw Satan fall. I used to, I used to think that Jesus was like, back in the day when Satan fell, I saw him. He's like, no. He's like, when I sent you out, I saw Satan fall like lightning. That means what I'm doing in and through you is more profound and powerful than any assignment of evil on this world. 
I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He was no match for God's power and his love. Evil is no match for your words of encouragement and your faith and your words of knowledge and the things you see and the discernment. Evil is no match for that. Even if you're the most ragtag little kid, right? No, not even close. And I've, been, I've given you, this is Jesus says, I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. The reason why we feel like culture and evil and things are all around us, right, or things are happening, is because we aren't exercising our faith to see God's power work and move through us. And then Jesus says this, and this just like wrecked them all, because they're like coming back like, look at us. Satan fell from heaven. What does he got? Right? And then Jesus warns us. Warnings are good, just so you know. However, he says, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Don't rejoice because we have all this stuff we can do. Right? We look at us. We can have faith when no one does. We can say these words that people don't know. You know, we can, we can uh, see, th- see people and lo- see the way God does. It's awesome. And God's like, hey, don't get all fired up about that. You should just be really stoked that your name is written on my heart. And that we will be together forever. And what is he saying here? Make sure humility is the key to all of this. Make sure that your heart, the same way God's heart is for people, is not in look what I can do. But in look, this is who God is. And what, how Pentecostalism has twisted over the year, it's gotten so worked up into like, look what we can do. We're the full gospel. We're, we got all the things. You don't really believe in all the, but we do. And I think they forgot, and I forget. I should just rejoice that God would choose me. I should just rejoice that Jesus would save me. And not only save me, but say, hey, watch this. I'm going to give you power and authority. I'm going to give you all of, my, all of my heart and all my authority and all my power and all of my ministry, and we're going to go and we're going to do this. And nothing will be able to stand against this. Nothing. So why don't we experience these things? We don't experience these things, first of all, and it's so simple, is because we don't ask. The reason why I don't have profound words of love for people is because I don't ask. Right? I'm too busy with my life. I got things to do. I got to get coffee, 16 ounces at least. Right? I got to get to my jobs. I have to check off my list, and we don't ask. Really simple. If you and I ask, God, would you give me an insight into people's lives and heart? Would you fill me with every gift and fruit of the Spirit? Would you help me to see what others can't see? Help me to encourage what people can encourage. Help me to function in more power and authority in my life so I'm not so discouraged by my circumstances and I can actually see other people and then hear your heart for them. What if we asked? What if we asked for that? It, it will make you feel weird sometimes because you'll be like, hey, um, so, I'm so I feel like I'm supposed to tell you this. And that'll be weird. You'll feel weird. It's okay. It's awesome. It's profound. The hu- biggest thing, the reason why God doesn't work, I think, in the American church, in the gifts and the power of the Spirit, not in a weird way. First of all, it's because we don't ask. And secondly is we're not humble. That we pursue the gifts like they're like, I made it to the right hand of God because I did this gift which was the attitude at that time. If I do all this stuff, Lord, can I sit at your right hand? And Jesus is like, oh, yeah, by the way, to be the top, you got to be the bottom. The reason why, especially in America, we don't experience this stuff, because we either get so, woo, or we're so afraid of it. And God's just asking us, what if you humbly just asked? Not that I would have this, this experience only, but I would see the power of your love and your spirit work through my life. And you don't have to have any biblical knowledge. Any. Or you're going to have like way more than the disciples did. They just walked with Jesus. You guys want to come up? So I'm going to close because I talk too much. But um, I want to pray for us. Is that if that's okay? I'm really passionate about this because I've seen this either be like there's no Holy Spirit, nothing, nothing, don't talk about it, it's scary, ah, so we don't talk about it or deal with it. Or I've seen it be like out of control. And I've been, I've sat there shocked 
and wondering, is this really what God wants us to do? And so what I believe is there's a place in the middle that there's confident followers of Jesus who understand that in our own strength, I cannot help change anyone's heart, right? In my own strength, but with coupled with my strength and the strength of God, I can see incredibly profound things happen. Because here's my fear sometimes in the American church, and I know I, I shouldn't talk bad about the American church because I am one. Um, when, I was in, when I was in middle school, I played football. You know, middle school football is hilarious because they're like, I was going to say they're terrible, but actually you guys are great. Keep it up. <laughs> but I remember there was this kid who like, there was like this buzz, like, oh man, he got super good in the off season. And, and he's like going to be, oh, he's going to be so just, whew, right? And he shows up the practice and his dad had bought him like his own pads. Like really nice, because like, we live in a small town. It was like like helmet from 1972 and, and like these pads were like falling apart and then his pads were like, whew, right? And he looked the part, man. And he came out and he was walking tall and he looked the part. And then when he got the ball the first time, he got drilled so hard and we laughed so hard. Because what happened is he had the look and he had everything on the outside in order. And he betrayed, but he, but he had no power. He had no skill. He had nothing inside of him to be able to do it. And my prayer for us as we pray here is that we would take what's on the inside and it would, be, it would be filled and empowered and that it would pour out of us to show Christ's love wherever we go. And the beauty of it is you don't have to do it in your own strength. You get to couple it with God's strength. Amen? So let's pray. Um, I would ask this. I'm going to pray just for a fresh uh, filling of the Spirit for each person. That's not weird. Okay? It's not weird. I know we've made it weird in our world culture, but all it is, I pray it every morning, Lord, would you fill me again with your spirit? And when I don't pray it, I feel it's depleted, but I want my life to be a walking with the spirit because it's not just so that I can have these gifts. It's because I all of a sudden have a connection with my savior who loves me. And he says, rejoice that your name is written on my heart and we get to be together forever. So I pray for you. If you're here and you just want to be filled, would you just kind of cup your hands out like this to receive from him? Not in a weird way. I'm not going to make you stand up or flop promise but if you just want to be refilled with the spirit we you know and what it means is that you're it's he is in you but it's just an, an outpouring to be more like christ to hear from him to be empowered by him lord jesus would you just fill us again with your spirit overflowing we take every heart here every deposit of your spirit inside of us and would you just make it come alive would you fan it into flame the mighty wind of your spirit fan into flame so it would not just be a, a, a coal in our hearts or a little flame from a lighter, but it would be fully a flame in you. Holy Spirit, fill us now. Just tell them, just that, pray that in your own words. Just fill me again. However, however you need to do it. God will never, he won't take over your body. He won't make you do weird things. He just wants to be fully empowered in your life so that you can function and flow in these gifts. And when you couple those with the rest of the gifts that you have, there is power. There's authority over evil. There's encouragement. You walk a little taller in the confidence of who Christ is and you're a little more humble knowing who you are. And Lord, I pray for each person that, that all we have to do is ask, Lord. So ask in this week, Lord, that we would see the gifts of the Spirit flowing out of us into the people that need to know your love, into each other, into other people, Lord. Would you do that in the name of Jesus? Would you do that now in your name? Why don't we stand together and sing? And I pray as we sing, as we put these words when we sing at the end of this time, I would encourage you that this, these words would just be like, like gas on a fire, right? That it would just like, it would solidify in your heart, it would fill you, and that God would go with you out into all the things he wants you to do. So let's sing this together. Let us become more aware.